Hello, having covered some cyber threats, let's now do a couple of videos on how we can actually defend against these threats, starting with physical security, focusing on biometrics and RFID. So first of all, physical security is all about you protecting the surroundings of a computer system in particular. So we're thinking about things almost unrelated to the computers themselves. We'll look at digital security in the next video, so things on the computer. Physical security are things around the computer is the idea. And some are really, really obvious, right? In my picture, I had a CCTV. That's quite an important physical security method, to be honest. But also things like locks, just making sure secure doors are kept locked, right? If you've got a server room, make sure it's locked after the technician leaves, for example, because otherwise anybody could just stroll in and access your computers. You might even hire actual security guards to patrol and ensure things are locked up. Another example of a very simple, really, method which can help is using privacy screens on monitors. Now, you might have seen these on phones as well. We put sort of a, almost like a screen protector style film across the monitor. And when you look at it straight on, it looks perfectly fine. But from an angle, you can't really see anything on the screen at all. So it blocks out stuff from around, people looking around. Because what happens sometimes is people look over your shoulder, look at, try and look at your password, try and look at sensitive information. A privacy screen can limit this. And it's not so much about, you know, protecting against an attacker. Well, no, I guess it is. But it's not so much, you know, locking doors or having privacy screens. It's more preventing an attacker in the future. But shredding is very commonplace. If you've got sensitive documents printed out, you can shred it to make sure it's pretty much unreadable afterwards. You can get very big and industrial shredders which can actually shred metal and shred plastic. So you might be able to shred devices too. We'll look at some physical destruction methods in a couple of videos time. But the point of the shredding is to destroy stuff so nobody can see it later on. Now biometrics require a little bit more explanation and just those three examples just to start off with, you know, there are loads more, of course. Biometrics are distinctive, measurable human characteristics. So things all of us have that are distinctive and measurable. Things like our height or our hair color or our shoe size are not distinctive enough. Biometrics are things like our fingerprints or our palm prints in some cases. Things like our irises. So the iris is the colored bit of your eye. I-R-I-S, that is unique as is your fingerprint. And so we're able to use those to determine somebody is who they say us. Often biometrics are used as alternatives to passwords. And the benefit of using these instead is passwords often get shared around, right? There might be one password to gain access to your server room, which all of the technicians just know and learn. And that's a risk because if it's widely known, it's no longer being kept as secure. So if you've got biometrics set up instead, you are able to use those uh, more effectively. They are more secure um, because it's harder to fake, right? It's hard to copy someone's eye and you'd have to use very, very um, advanced technology. But also you can use to verify somebody. So if you want to use it as access control, you can as well, fingerprint scanners, etc. Now, in terms of slight weaknesses, they can be a bit unreliable. Um, you might have found that especially biometrics on phones are not always the most reliable. Uh, you might uh, you might not gain access to your own phone because it's not working all the time. And some could be forged, not so much irises or fingerprints, but you could forge like face ID or facial recognition or voice recognition. could be forged or tricked, but not quite as accurate as other methods. The last technology to consider is RFID. RFID is short for Radio Frequency Identification. And... RFID systems use two key parts. So you've got to have an RFID reader and you've got to have a tag or multiple tags. So the way this works is RFID uses electromagnetic fields to detect tags in the, in the area. So you have a reader and you've got lots of tags scattered about and the reader can detect the tags when they are nearby. The range is not always that long, um, but once they're nearby, it will get scanned. So RFID can be used in security to unlock doors. So if you have, say, an ID card 
If it's RFID set up, the tag is the ID card and the scanner is what's on the wall here. You can get access because each person could have a tag which is unique and um, only allows entry if they are authorized. Now the benefit of this over something like a lock is you can enable tracking. You can see exactly who has entered each room and when. So a, a basic key you can't track at all, but this system you're able to track people leaving and people entering each of your secure areas. The benefit of RFID is that you don't need to be line of sight. So if you've got a more powerful tag than just an ID card, if you are just around the reader, you can get entry. So some systems you might not even have to touch it, you can just walk in. If you've got the tag on you, the reader will be able to detect it from a longer distance. Now tags are sometimes called tokens, but tokens can also be a separate concept in physical security. We looked at tokens back in the context of token ring networks. That's a separate concept, so these tokens are different. A token in security can also be used to verify somebody. So a token is just a little object which can verify somebody. And it might be because the object is part of the RFID system and the little tag, the little token could be used as a tag. But equally, it might be used as part of two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is where you have to put at least two bits of information in to access to a system. So typically, you put in your password and that's it. That's one factor authentication. Two factors is where you're using your phone to confirm you're getting a text message or you've got a token. And for example, you might plug in a token to a laptop. And the fact that you've got your password and the token shows that it's you and it offers more security. Because somebody could guess your password, but it's unlikely they're gonna have access to both your token and your password. So having a physical device to help verify you can be more secure.